How to Train Your Dragon. This high-flying film brings Chris Sanders and Dean DeBlois' animating talents back on the big screen. And this time, they're on DreamWorks' side now. Today, the film is getting huge amount of praise by critics. And I mean, it's crazy how much they like it. By watching this, everybody is wondering about the same thing. Is it really that good? Let's find out. Shall we? The story. Surprisingly, it isn't as good as I thought it would be. It's where two guys who are supposed to be enemies are friends and stuff. Because of this, it makes the story pretty predictable and less interesting. It's like you know what's gonna happen next. I mean, that kind of story has been used a lot of times before. I will give it some points for the idea of Vikings vs Dragons though, that is cool. On top of that, they would mix it with the underdog story where in the beginning the main character is a loser and as the movie progresses he becomes more and more of a winner. So in all, they mix two typical story ideas in one film. Does it make it new and special? No. Oh and uh, one more thing. I have to say that the ending is pretty redundant. The animation. Now here's the movie's strongest point. This is seriously one of DreamWorks' most beautiful animated films ever made. Every little detail has been perfected. The hair, the skin, the scales on the dragons, everything! The character design is also pretty good, since we can see the Chris Sander style on it. And then there's the dragons. I know this is a little bit nitpicking, but why do all the dragons have big eyes and giant jaws? Now, I know what you're about to say. What about Toothless? He doesn't have big eyes or giant jaws. Well, that's because he's modeled after Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. And I know so because while I'm making this review, I'm writing on this film for the next animation look back. Oh, and uh, one more thing, keep your eyes out for Hiccup and Toothless when they're flying in the air. It's like the best part of the film, and it's possibly one of DreamWorks' best work. The characters. The characters in How to Train Your Dragon are pretty good, and the acting's okay, but not all are memorable. Let's begin with the main character, Hiccup. Let me tell you that this guy is pretty annoying. I don't know if it's either his voice or anything, but he gets irritating for a while. And it doesn't help that he's the main character of the movie, so get used to it if you can. There are also the students that are actually not bad, likable even. And then there's Astrid, who I think is the strongest character in the film, and may I say, DAMN IS SHE HOT! I don't really care about Stoic, however. Yeah, he's the leader of the Vikings, and yeah, he's the main character's dad, we've heard that before. But Gober, I like him, and I think you'll like him too. For the dragons, I find that it's a great idea that they made a variety of dragons, and each of them have different abilities and stuff, but it makes you wish that there are more than four different kinds of the film, if you don't count Toothless and the other one which I won't tell. I know they mentioned more than that, but that's how many kinds of dragons that appeared in the film. It's like in the Pokemon games, where there's only one of your main guys in the entire game, but when you stay around one place, there are only a few different kinds of guys, but there are like a bajillion of them everywhere. How to Train Your Dragon is pretty much the avatar of DreamWorks Animation. We all have heard of the story before, but the animation is just amazing, and even beautiful. What the critics have given the film, however, I think it's a bit over-exaggerated. I'm not saying that the film is bad, in fact, I think it's actually pretty good, but I wouldn't put this film almost 100%. As for the 3D thing, you should save your money and go with 2D, there's like no difference at all. Great job with the animation, DreamWorks! Just work a little harder onto the story, okay? 